I think it's about time we finally talk a little bit about Skyward Sword. Hey everybody, Zeno here, and if you didn't hear for some reason or another, I don't know why you wouldn't, but uh, Skyward Sword is getting an HD remake this year, and people have thoughts. So yeah, to start off this year, Nintendo hit us with the announcement of this HD remake, Skyward Sword HD. And I, for one, am very much looking forward to the release of this uh, new version of Skyward Sword. I'm also very much looking forward to the fact that a lot of people will get the chance to give Skyward Sword a second chance. Now, following the announcement of this remake, there has, of course, been some controversy, because, of course, controversy has to follow Skyward Sword wherever it goes, which I just, I feel very bad for this game, because, as we'll get into here in a minute, I think it does a whole lot of things right, and I actually really enjoy the game myself, but uh, one of the big things that has been following it lately is this whole price debacle, where is it really worth it to spend $60 on a game that came out 10 years ago at $50? And it's this whole pricing thing that Nintendo has been doing forever. They know the power of their IPs, so they will capitalize on that, so their consumers will buy at a higher price, because they know that they will. And uh, it still is its starting to upset people more than it ever has. We've seen this recently with games like Pikmin 3 Deluxe, where it was originally a seven-year-old Wii U game that was last year ported to the Switch, and is again $60 now on the Switch. Now, even for that game, it runs even deeper because you see the Nintendo Selects branding on Wii U has made the game only $20, so it's like, it's even more of a price discrepancy there. This, of course, has happened with other games like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze and, most recently, 3D World, which did come with Bowser's Fury, so I, I feel a little, little more like I can let that one off easy. But, uh, yeah, it's just been a running problem, and it's been building up, and apparently, Skyward Sword HD just opened the floodgates, people couldn't take it anymore, and now we have uh, even more backlash on Skyward Sword. From my perspective, it is scummy. Like, Nintendo, this is a game that was made 10 years ago. You were already selling it for $50 at that point, so you could at least give it a $50 price tag here, but no, you went for $60. And, uh, I mean, maybe there are some big new features here that they haven't shown off yet, but I feel like if there were, they would have already shown them. So I'm not 100% gonna pile on them yet, but uh, I do see the problems here, and uh, I will acknowledge them, but that's not the point. The reason we're here today is not to talk about all the controversies behind this game, but the game itself, Skyward Sword, and why I think it's a great game. So I don't even know how many times I've said this at this point, but uh, I feel like I can't say anything else now, which is a Skyward Sword gets a bad rap. This game, as I alluded to earlier, has always been followed by controversies. It was the last in the line of linear 3D Zeldas, so we were getting kind of fatigued at that point. It also decided to do something brand new, which was bring motion controls into the mix, and for a lot of people, that was an immediate turnoff. But when you look at the game under that, you see a good game. It's not a flawless game, no Zelda game is, but it has a lot of really great moments as well. Whenever I think of Skyward Sword, I think of it as a feel-good game. Like, if I'm just feeling down or something, I can turn on Skyward Sword, go run around in Farron Woods, and I'll feel better. Because just from the art style to the music to the just simpleness of the gameplay, I love it. One of the first things that comes to mind for the game design of Skyward Sword is linearity. This world is made up of a lot of finely constructed paths that don't really allow for a lot of breathing room and uh, trying new things and going in different directions and all that. It's actually the antithesis of Breath of the Wild, which is really interesting because as much as they differ in execution, the ideas and design approach are still very similar. This game is responsible for the inspiration behind two of Breath of the Wild's most important factors, which is the paraglider and the stamina gauge. The stamina gauge was straight up ripped out of this game, and while the paraglider has changed a whole lot from what it was in Skyward Sword, you can see even in like early demo footage that was shown all the way back at like the Game Awards in 2015 I think, they straight up used the sailcloth before later switching the design to the paraglider. Skyward Sword is no Breath of the Wild of course, but as I said, I feel like the design approach here is very similar, just in a different execution, which is a very linear execution. And I feel like that's also something to appreciate, because even though Breath of the Wild was very freeing with how it lets you do anything and go anywhere, it also brought up a kind of like longing for the old design at the same time, I guess. Breath of the Wild's existence doesn't negate the importance of the old Zelda formula, and Skyward Sword was the last game to use that formula. I think Skyward Sword is going to be a very nice breath of fresh air now, actually, after Breath of the Wild, which is really, 
weird to say. It's a really interesting situation because we've had Breath of the Wild now, and I personally, I don't know what everybody else is feeling, but I feel like it's something that is probably shared between some people at least, kind of had a longing to go back to the old games after playing Breath of the Wild. And lo and behold, the first of that old formula they're putting on the Switch is Skyward Sword. We did get a Link's Awakening remake and you can play the first three games on Switch Online, but this is a 3D Zelda game and that's something totally different from the 2D games. And the first one they decided to bring over to the Switch is Skyward Sword. And I think that that was actually a really good decision. Like I said, a lot of people skipped out on this game. I mean, just look at the numbers. Of the two Wii Zelda titles, Twilight Princess sold about 10 million units and Skyward Sword sold about four. It's pretty plain to see the drop off there, and I think that's due mainly to two factors, motion controls and timing. Now I have a piece to say on the motion controls real quick because while they're not perfect, and there are some areas where I want to pull my hair out because of how unperfect they are, I'm looking at you, goddess harp. Um, I still will stand by them because although they are not perfect, they are unlike anything else I've ever seen in a game. This combat system is so unique and it can be really fun at times. Like the concept of turning every single battle into a puzzle is just such a Zelda idea, you know, because puzzles, thinking, all that stuff is at the very core of the series. Also, it helps to make every enemy encounter feel like an actual event, like something interesting, like uh, it's not something that you just shrug off, oh, okay, here's some bacoblins, I'll shoot them with arrows and run away. No, it's something you have to engage yourself in and figure out how the heck I'm going to hit them because they keep trying to block me because the enemy AI here is actually pretty decent. I'm not saying I ever want to see this again. <laughs> I feel like a Skyward Sword is enough motion control Zelda for me, but uh, I am saying that I think what we got here was very interesting and new, and I appreciate it. I very much appreciate that it tried to do something different. And I have a message to anyone that's right-handed and has said, I will not try this game. I am so opposed to motion controls. It's going to be terrible. I hate uh, all these controls and everything. All right. I'm left-handed, okay? And I played through this game. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> I can rag on Nintendo all day about not being inclusive to lefties and how they totally purged Link's character by taking away his one attribute that I loved, which was that he was left-handed. But, uh... I won't today. <laughs> so I hope you're starting to see why I say Skyward Sword gets such a bad rap. It's one of the most feel-good games I've ever played. It's such a unique control style, even if it's not the best at times. It's still a really fun time whenever I do come around to playing Skyward Sword. If there's two more things about this game I really need to point out, it's the music and the story. Okay, let's start with the music because this might just be my favorite Zelda soundtrack. I think Skyward Sword absolutely kills it in the music department. It has those songs for the somber moments, it has those songs for the big triumphant moments and all that, and it has so many just brand new, basically classic Zelda songs to me now, even though they're very new. I mean, who would have thought that you could reverse Zelda's lullaby and make an amazing new theme for this game in the Ballad of the Goddess? Apparently the composers for this game, and they must be geniuses because, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is such a good soundtrack. On top of how much I love these songs though, I feel like a big part of what brings the whole thing to life is that this is a fully orchestrated soundtrack as well. I feel like when this happens, it's not given nearly as much praise as it should. Uh, Mario Galaxy is also fully orchestrated and you can tell by just how great the music is in that game as well. Whenever Nintendo goes all in and does a fully orchestrated version of these soundtracks, it always just turns out 10 times better in my opinion. I was also really surprised to learn that apparently Koji Kondo, who we know is like the main composer behind all the past Zelda games, like he's the head honcho, he wrote the original Zelda song in like a day. Um, <laughs> He barely worked on this soundtrack. He was in for like one song at the very beginning of the game, but that was about it. Uh, he was more in a supervising role for this, which is really interesting to me because as I said, it might just be my favorite, if not that one of my favorites in the series. So I was, I was surprised to learn that, yeah, apparently some fresh talent got this amazing soundtrack together. But of course, in a video game, a lot of times the second part of the narrative when it comes to music is how you see that music in game, how it pairs with what's going on on the screen. And for a Skyward Sword, it just so happens to have a pretty great story for Zelda standards. I feel like this is one of the only times I've ever seen Nintendo actively go in the direction of wanting to tell a good story. You have to remember, this game was made in 2011, which was also when Hyrule Historia came out and the Zelda timeline was first introduced. 
Nintendo was actively pursuing putting these games together in one timeline and pursuing an actual continuity. Knowing a lot more about what goes on behind the scenes now and how apparently Shigeru Miyamoto usually actively discourages this in games where you pursue story this... this much. This blew my mind. I think Skyward Sword is the first time the Zelda series tried to make a compelling story on the surface level. We've seen great stories from Zelda in the past. I think to Majora's Mask all the time is one of my favorite examples of a story being told in a video game ever. But the difference there is to find all the great elements of that story, you need to dig deeper. You need to look into things more and figure it out yourself. See that's something the Zelda series has always strived for, to give the player all the tools to figure out everything themselves. They will not plainly state to you <laughs> what this story is about or all the details of it. They will lay the breadcrumbs for you to pick up and turn into a theory, which is why Zelda theories on YouTube are just uh, <laughs> something that is so big. Telling a compelling story is usually not their first objective. The higher ups on the team, that's not what they're looking to. They're looking to make a good gameplay experience. With Skyward Sword, I think something shifted there. I think this was actually one of the main things they were setting out to do with this game. And I think they succeeded. This is a great origin story, and it gives a whole lot more characterization to both Zelda and Link, and even the villains as well. Also, I can't bring up the word Skyward Sword without mentioning Groose. Groose is... <laughs> An amazing character. I love him dearly. But it really is, it really is a great story that makes you want to continue playing through the game, which is exactly what stories are supposed to do in games. So I hope you're starting to see why I say Skyward Sword gets such a bad rap. It's such a feel-good game to me. I can play it and it just makes me feel happier. The motion controls are very unique and I feel like a lot of the uh, backlash around them is a little overblown. I feel like they can be pretty fun at times as well. The music in this game, as I said, is maybe my favorite in the series, which I think says enough right there. And the story is great, and I feel like it's one of the first times the Zelda team has really focused in on telling a story. This is why you shouldn't sleep on Skyward Sword. Whether it be you go out and buy a Wii and play the original version of the game, or you wait for this July and you play the brand new HD remake when that comes out, I think it's a game worth playing. And on the note of the HD remake, I feel like it's a good chance to smooth over the rough patches of this game. I've slung almost nothing but praise at Skyward Sword here today, but I do have a few things that I think the remake could change to make this game even better. Now the big one of course is accessibility with motion controls. Not only is it that some people just don't like using the motion controls, but some people just can't too, which is a big accessibility problem. Now luckily this is the one thing that we know right now straight up is going to change. We will have access to button controls by using the right analog stick, which is so obvious yet something I would have never thought of. <laughs> I'm ecstatic about this. I feel like motion controls is something everyone that can should try for this game because it is very much a unique experience that is just at the core of the game. But I'm excited to see how these new button controls can switch things out and make people just enjoy the game more maybe. Another big thing with remakes like this of course is graphical enhancements, which we've seen and some people think that it's not that big of a difference. I initially was one of those people, I didn't think the graphical difference was that much of a difference from the Wii, but then I went back and played Skyward Sword on the original Wii, um, and it's very pixelated. Remember the Wii was not an HD system, so this game just running in 1080p, that already is a big graphical difference. While it looks like they didn't go back and redo much of the texturing, I don't think that's much of a problem, because this game has a very distinct art style that I feel like doesn't really need it. Skyward Sword has such a unique art style that's known as Impressionism. If you were to ask me to describe it, I'd say it's very dreamlike, and a little bit similar to Breath of the Wild. Everything just kind of blends, and you get all these softer colors as well, and it results in, as I said, just a very feel-good kind of style. It is good to hear though that apparently performance-wise this game has been updated to 60 FPS over the 30 you would see in the Wii version, which I believe is something pretty new for the Zelda series, like usually they're pretty graphically intensive on the system so we don't get to see 60 FPS usually. So as far as motion controls and graphics, I feel like these are pretty good additions to make the game better. The only thing I really still want is uh, a few other things out outside of that. Uh, and we'll start with controls because there is one more thing I want to see out of controls because as I went back to play Skyward Sword uh, pretty recently, one thing that really bothered me was no free camera control. 
Now, of course, we already talked about how the right stick is going to be used as a replacement for the motion controls, but I really think that when you're still using motion controls, you should use that stick to give the player full 3D camera movement. When I went back to play Skyward Sword before making this video, that was probably the thing that bothered me the most about the game, more than the motion controls, more than the pixely 480p resolution. It was this very strict camera that could only be moved with uh, the Z button to right behind you. And I feel like just adding that option for when you were still using motion controls and that stick is still open would make this game play so much better. And it would be so much easier to move around because I would be jumping into lava so many times because just the camera would not work with me. And uh, that was just actually the worst part of going back to the game for me. So I am hoping they do that. Now let's go on to quest fixes because this is something they did in both Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD where they took out portions of the game that were very tedious, like you would take out some of the Triforce quest uh, in Wind Waker and it wouldn't be as many parts so it wasn't as tedious. And also there were less Tears of Light in uh, Twilight Princess HD which was very nice as well. I would have liked them to take out more of the tutorial, but uh, they did that, so that, that I can't complain too much. Anyway, for Skyward Sword, I feel like what really needs to be hit here is uh, two sections in particular, which is all uh, a lot of the late game stuff, because uh, anyone that's played Skyward Sword knows the late game can be a little bit tedious. So the first thing I'm gonna say here is not going to surprise a lot of people, which is that the Tad Tones need to be reworked. That is a very <laughs> tedious section. We have to go through all of Farron Woods, underwater Farron Woods, and uh, it's a very large area, and there's a lot of just little Tad Tone notes just, uh, just going around. You gotta find all of them, and a lot of them move around, and it's a very tedious section, and I don't know exactly how you could fix that, but it needs to be fixed. <laughs> I guess maybe just one thing that would really help is uh, make it so none of them can move. <laughs> just make them in default positions so that uh, it's much easier to find them. That's my only real suggestion. I don't know. I can't remember the section too well either, but I know that everyone always complains about it, so I'm like, okay, yeah. You should probably fix it. The main quest that I remember the most and I think needs to be fixed, though, is the Silent Realms, because these are really cool areas where you go into this otherworldly version of the same areas you've already been traversing around and you have all these deadly guardians. These were the first guardians, guys, <laughs> and um, they're very, very scary, especially when if they hit you, all your progress is undone, which is the main problem with this. It can be very tedious if you get hit when you're almost done and then you have to go back to the very beginning and redo the entire thing again, and it's just super duper stressful, and I think that needs to be fixed. I really kind of like these sections, and I think that uh, that adrenaline can really work sometimes, but just the fact that you have to go back and do everything if you have like one tier left and you just get hit, uh, that's that's just too much. I feel like maybe make the punishment like you, lo uh, you lose a tier or two. If you get hit, you lose a tier or two, you have to go find those again. Uh, that seems like a more fair punishment, but uh, every single tier, no, don't do not do that again, please. Please fix that. That's the main thing that I remember because I just played through it again and I'm like, okay, yeah, please fix this, Nintendo. Um, but yeah, those are the main things that I want them to fix. I feel like those are mostly shared by everyone. They want those sections to be just easier or just maybe even non-existent for the Tad Tones. I don't know, but... Um, those are the uh, quests that I would change. I am really excited for this remake though. I think Skyward Sword very much is deserving of a second chance. It got some pretty poor timing with the release. The motion controls were a pretty big nuisance to a lot of people. But the game does still have a lot of really good qualities. It inspired Breath of the Wild in a lot of ways. And I definitely think that it's still worth the play. You shouldn't sleep on Skyward Sword. Hey guys, thanks for joining me for this discussion about Skyward Sword. I feel like it's a game that uh, just gets a lot of hate sometimes, and I feel like it's a lot of times not that deserved. It's a really good game under all of its small problems and everything, and I really think this remake could fix a lot of those. If you did enjoy my take on it and want to see more videos like this, or more Zelda theories, or more Zelda anything, or more Nintendo anything, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right below. This is a, this is a video that, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, just subscribe to the channel. We do lots of stuff around here. Usually make new videos once a week and it's been a lot of fun lately. I can't wait till we finally learn some new Breath of the Wild 2 news sometime later this year. And I hope you guys stay over here by subscribing so you can see when that does happen. And I have so many 
brand new weird things to talk about. Until then though, we have some great upcoming videos, so I hope you're excited to see those. If you're feeling so inclined, you can follow me on Twitter at XenogamerYT, you can join the Discord server with the link in the description, and you can check out the streams on Twitch every Friday. I want to uh, push these more because I've been having a lot of fun over there, and uh, I think that a lot of you might have some fun as well. It's always a pretty chill atmosphere and everything, you know, just talking about games, playing games, and, uh, and you know, it's kind of similar to this video in a way. It's pretty chill, so come on down sometime. You'll probably like it. Finally, I want to hear from you guys if you have any other ideas for improving Skyward Sword uh, HD. Do you think that there are any other quests we could take out to make the game better? Is there some kind of very terrible nuisance that I just totally missed that uh, should be taken out of this game? Maybe like uh, uh, where whenever you pick up a thing after turning off the game, you have to like view the cutscene thing for it again. I just thought of that. That's actually pretty good, yeah. Get, get rid of that as well. Any other things you guys got though, hit me with them in the comments below. Would love to hear it. And uh, just uh, tell me if you like the video too. If you if you like the video, I just say like, oh, Xeno, this is a good, this is a good video. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of liking the video though, you can also hit the like button if you don't want to ha have to make it like a whole comment too. You can you can do that. And uh, <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate uh, uh, just uh, hanging out with me today and talking about Skyward Sword. Appreciate you. Have a good day. Fantastic one. I'll see you guys soon. Until then, bye bye.